Hey guys, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial and today we're going to be looking at audio and how to play audio within Unity 5. Now I'm going to show you four different examples of how to actually sh um, play different types of audio. Um, one's going to be just using audio.play, the next is going to be audio.play one shot, the other one's going to be playing a one shot sound on a trigger and then I'm going to show you one without having to actually write any code, we'll just enable the game object and then it'll play the sound on a wake and I'll show you all the ins and outs and I'll put a little um, some sort of annotations on this video so you can click through to the different parts that you want to see. So we'll start off with the first one which is audio.play so we need to set up a few things in the scene. I'm going to create a new game object uh, I'm going to call it sound. It's just an empty game object which is just going to exist in the game. Now I'm going to right click in the project panel and go create and JavaScript and I'm going to call this audio play and we're going to sort of base it all in this script so I'm going to open up in mono develop and once we're there I'm just going to zoom in I'm going to delete the starting functions and we're going to start by doing the audio.play so which means that all audio.play does it might find a piece of audio that exists and plays it whenever you want to so what we can start by doing is saying function start two brackets two curly brackets below then in unity 5 it's changed slightly we can say variable audio as type audio source equals get component dot then we're going to need a angled bracket to the left or less than and then we'll say audio source then we'll close that angle bracket up at the other side and then we'll add two brackets and a semicolon so this is just saying that we're creating a variable which is audio it's going to be looking for an audio source and it's going to get the component audio source so we're going to put this on our game object and then under there we can say audio dot play with two brackets and a semicolon so now we'll test this out and I'll save that and now from here, what we'll do is we'll go to our sound game object. It'll have nothing on at the moment. We'll add a component. And what we're going to do is we're going to add audio play. So the script that we just made, you can drag it on or you can just add it there. We're going to add a component and you must make sure that it's got an audio source on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to untick play on awake or anything like that. I'm going to add an audio clip to there. So I'm going to just put in my explosion clip. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit because I think this but this explosion is quite loud. So now when we play the game, it will just play that audio because it's on function start. If we press play, you will have heard it play that sound. And it didn't play it automatically because play on awake is unticked. So we know the script works. If I disable the script and press play, you can see that you didn't hear the explosion. So that's just number one. Number two, I'm going to show you how to do um, play one shot. So we're going to do somewhat the same. I'm just going to literally comment out these lines here so we don't have them in anymore. Then we're going to say get component and then dot, then two angled brackets like we did before. Then we'll say audio source again. then two brackets dot play one shot and then open brackets is what I'm going to write in sound and what I want to do up here is I want to write my own variable and I'm going to have variable sound as type audio clip with a semicolon so that means that it's going to find the component audio source and it's going to play um, the sound which I specify up here so it's slightly changed in Unity 5 and it has to find the audio source for it to work. And it's similar to C Sharp in a way with the way that this is arranged. So again, on my sound, you'll notice that now we've got a sound which has appeared. So what I can do in this audio source to make sure that you know it works is that I can choose none in there. So it's got nothing in the audio source until we give it something up here. So I need to add the explosion again into my sound 
I need to make sure that I retick um, the script so we can play again. Then you will have heard it slightly in the background. So I might turn the volume up so you can hear it. I don't know how loud it is. You can hear that it audio.play one shot make sure that it only plays once. So that's another thing that we can do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out and I'm going to go for the third example. And I'm going to write function on trigger enter open brackets call call on collider close that up add two curly brackets below if call dot compare tag open brackets in quotes player close two brackets up and then we'll have two curly brackets below and what we'll do is we'll add the same thing we'll add the get component line so get component audio source dot player one shot is sound and then we'll click save and what we'll do from here is I will create my own trigger. So I'm going to create a game object or a 3D object, which is a cube. And from there, I'll just apply this cube to the floor. I'll make it a little bit bigger. So we're definitely going to walk into this. What well, I'll make sure that my trigger is, is trigger. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the empty game object that I've got because I don't need that anymore. So I've got my cube, which is acting as my trigger. I'm going to add audio play to that. So this is going to be my trigger now. You need to make sure your player is, or your FPS controller is tagged player. So there, I've tagged it as player, so it makes sure it'll work now when we collide with the um, object. Now, we need a sound in the explosion again. So I'm going to add that. But again, you need to remember that we need to add an audio source. And I'll untick play on awake because we want to do it via script. So we don't want it to happen. If I left play on awake on, it would apply that as soon as I started the game because this trigger exists. Now, as long as I untick that, I press play. And nothing happened at the first. I walked through that collider and then we played the sound once. I'll do it once every time we walk through that trigger. And that's that bit for part three. Now for part four, what I was going to say is I will disable the trigger. I will go back onto the sound. We can remove the script now from our object. Now I only have the audio source on the object that exists in the world. Now what I'll do in here is I will add explosion. And then I will make sure play on awake is on. So as soon as I start the game now, because this actual sound, when I enable it, this game object exists in the world. As soon as it plays the game, just like function start, it will play it. So there you go. And obviously you can put loop on if you say you had some background audio. That sound effect over and over and over. So I'll quickly go over what I'd we'd done before is we've got th four different types. We've got one which is just audio play, and you need to set a variable of audio, look for an audio source component, and then you can play whatever audio you want for as long as you need it to be. Or you can have one which is get component, looking for an audio source, and we play the one shot, so we play it one time. You can do that on a trigger event here, and as long as you play a hit set, it'll play it once, and then you can disable it with a piece of script, or, like I said, that you could uh, even have this game object here, which has the sound on, which plays on awake. You could enable and disable it as many times as you wanted. So say when you enable it, it will play that sound. You disable it again, it will not play it. If you enable it again, it will play that sound again. So that's a way that you could possibly work with your sound. But anyway, this was just four ways that in Unity 5, you can make sure that you've got your sound working you just need to make sure that you've always got an audio source on something that plays the audio or it will throw up an error so thanks again for watching and i hope this helped you out don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers